whether we end up paying for that or not, the bottom line is there is something in the water here because there are a lot of initiatives very similar to this on the student loan issue. Uh, for example, in, in California, the push by the governor right now uh, to shift the, the, the definition of, of a full work week from 40 hours to 32 hours. That means that anything over 32 hours would count as overtime, and for a lot of businesses, it would be an immediate expense. Ed Renzi is the former McDonald's USA CEO. Um, Ed, what do you think, first off, of this, of this plan? The, the governor is very serious about it, and he has pretty big support in the dominant Democratic legislature. Sure. California has always been on the leading edge of smart things and dumb things. Um, I think that uh, there's been a lot of experiments around the world. Uh, Iceland most recently did a 32 work week, 32 hour work week. Um, in the United States, uh, in, in California particularly, this is going to affect about 3,000 businesses if they have over 500 employees and they're not a unionized shop. Uh, that means if you have 50 employees in your business, you're going to have to hire 10 more employees to fill that function for the rest of those hours and more significantly. Uh, if you need 50, you only got 40 now because we got 12 million unfilled jobs in the United States right now that we can't recruit for. Restaurants are desperately trying to hire people and can't find them anywhere. So you put this kind of a thing in place, you're going to be paying a lot of people overtime. It's also going to allow people to get two jobs because they can work three days in one place, three days in another place. Mm. Um, and, you know, how do you stop that? Uh, if you really want them to have a healthy life, a good well-being, and a 32-hour work week works, okay, great, except that's not what's going to happen. Government never understands the law of unintended consequences. We see it every day. Um, so, you know, I've got mixed feelings about it. I want my workers, I want our workers to have a good quality of life, have enough money to support themselves and their families and put their kids through college and, and whatever else they need money for. But I don't want them tired. You know, the United States works about 1,770 or 67 hours more per year than all other countries except four. That's Israel, Korea, uh, Russia, um, and Mexico. Hmm. Uh, so we do put in a lot of hours. And, and so to, to balance that in some fashion makes sense to me. But if you're going to have to hire 20 people to replace 10 and you can't get them anyway— you're going to be paying overtime, which means labor costs are going to go up. And labor already runs 30 percent of most businesses' pay, uh, expense account. So when you look at all these issues, I think it needs more study. It might be absolutely the right thing to do, but we don't know enough about the impact of this to really understand the downline consequences. Well, we know enough that some of these restaurants particularly, and a lot of, of the businesses, have upped their minimum wage, many, time, many of them way over $20 an hour. Now, on top of that, for a 32-hour work week, where overtime and time and a half, a lot of these places would kick in, um, that, that hourly rate goes up all the more, $23, $24, $25 an hour. You bet. Where does it stop? I, I, I just went past uh, three McDonald's getting here to the studio, and the sign on the, the reader board on the sign said, now hiring hourly employees is $16 an hour. Hmm. If they have to hire 20 more employees, all of a sudden those getting overtime are going to be making $24 an hour to bag French fries when they're 17 or 18 years old and have no job skills. It costs almost $5,900 to onboard a new employee and train them. And now you're going to add this cost on top of it? I'll tell you, a hamburger in a restaurant is going to cost more money than you have in your wallet one of these days. Uh, we just can't. And, with, and you think about this, too, Neil. Look at what's happening to commodity costs. You know, commodity costs are up 8.5%, 9%. Fuel's up. Big component of the commodity cost is fuel, by the way. Uh, so you look at all these factors. These restaurants are doing more sales than they've done in the last three years and making less money. It's and just want, but then, then you got to wonder. I mean, they they got to pass along at least some of these costs to to consumers. Uh, and, oh, absolutely. And I'm wondering what the the pressure tipping point will be. Well, what hap the tipping point is going to be when customers quit buying product. Right. In the perfect definition of stagflation, you know, they're making a lot of money, but they're not buying anything, and the economy is going nowhere. I lived through that with Carter, Nixon, and price and wage controls, you and, me and both. it was ugly. Yeah. It was ugly. But it fed on itself, no pun intended for the fast food industry, but it did feed on itself. And people 
then began rethinking these so-called discretionary expenses. And unfortunately, fast food was lopped into that. I'm just wondering, uh, if this were to take hold in California, obviously the sentiment is it's going to spread, and people will look at this 32-hour work week as the norm. Uh, how likely do you think that is? Oh, I think it's very likely. Washington will be next. Michigan will come right after that. Although Michigan is largely a union state, it'll go to Pennsylvania, New York. And once that starts happening, you're going to see a, a shift in uh, virtually all the states. They're going to have to do something to be able to compete. Um, there are not very many brave governors these days that stand up. I look at Abbott and DeSantis and a couple others. But, boy, after that, it's all about buying votes. Even like this student loan uh, forgiveness. It's all about buying votes from that age group. It's all that amounts to. And it's all about con consolidating power. And we need to understand these things as citizens and start thinking rationally about what's the best for the overall good of the country. Someone has to pick up that tab, right? Someone has to pick up that tab. Uh, Ed Renzi, thank you very much, my friend, the former McDonald's USA CEO. What's that? They say what begins in California.